Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 102nd episode of Jin Japan Podcast. And 102 is a special number, and I thought on the 102nd, we need a guest. It shouldn't just be about me, it should be about other people in Japan too. And one of my friends in Japan has, is going to come on today and just talk about, well, his life in Japan and some things about LGBT community in Japan. So that's going to be the theme of today's episode with our guest, Foo, but you want to go by another name, don't you? Yes, my stage name is Stephanie Saint Slut. Of course, so, the slut is censored because it's a <laughs> bit um, family friendly. It, it's okay, no one listens that was underage, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the age group I see on Anchor are like over 40, so it's okay. <laughs> That's good then, yes. So it's uh, Stephanie Saint Slut, mm. and um, my main job is an English teacher here in Tokyo, but mm. I do drag as part time. It's, it's let's say it's a hobby rather than a part time job. Mm. I don't really get paid so that really, much um, for it. Sometimes I do get paid, but mainly it's just a hobby. Mm. So it's English by day and drag by night. Exactly. Teacher by day and drag by night. And oh. I'm literally wiping my shirt right now because <laughs> while I was getting ready for this podcast, I accidentally <laughs> touched um, the shirt to my lipstick and now it's <laughs> you can see it's right here there we go yep like the paint that is stained my white fur. Tai hen. This is tai hen. So <laughs> i'm trying to get off as much as i can using my cup remover and later i'm going to have bleach 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 <laughs> the, uh, i'm sorry yes. if the inconvenience this podcast has caused it's destroyed a shirt <laughs> 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 it's not really a shot though, it's more like a shoulder piece. See that? Ah. Yeah. So is that part of your drag costume? Exactly. I was ah. planning to use this for um this look right now because I have this fucking ugly blue shirt on right here. But Well you like, just put it around your neck and no one will notice the bit on the back, so it's okay, right? <laughs> but then because I accidentally got lipstick on it, so I'm just freaking out right now. So <laughs> Okay, so we get it. back to some questions. <laughs> Yes, police. So, Stephanie, how did you come to Japan? Like, what made you want to come to Japan in the first place? Um, so, when I was looking for a, um, a university back at high school, I was thinking of, like, Europe, America, and mm. Asia, because I really wanted to go abroad. Europe and America were too expensive. And yeah. uh, I found out about my university, it's Minkang Asia Pacific University in Kyushu. What? Uh, Kyushu? Went... Where's Kyushu? Yes, Kyushu is the northern, I'm sorry, the southern part of Japan. Oh. It's, it's one of the main four islands. And uh, we actually went to that university together. Yeah, yeah. we did. <laughs> and it's for, for the listeners who don't know where <laughs> Kyushu is. Because um... they, know, they know where Tokyo is, but they don't know what Kyushu is. <laughs> oh, okay. And, like, is that uh, food? <laughs> yeah, uh, I met... Daniel in uh, our university so yeah <laughs> and uh, um, I got the scholarship and then I came here so the main reason I chose Japan was that it was the option I could afford back then mm. yeah and also I love art so Japan is like the land of art with all mm. the animation and all the manga and stuff yeah the creativity in Japan is amazing yeah and um I like drawing, so when I was a kid, I I practiced manga style a lot. Ah, and uh, manga <laughs> and of course, <laughs> it influenced my art style. So mm. now my drawing is very like Japanese manga influenced. Yep. <clears throat> I'll show you some of those for the blog post. And yeah, that's how I came to Japan. Like I won nice. the scholarship. And I also got a lot of inspiration for my art. Nice, and that brought you to Japan, and now you're still in Japan, right? Yes, that's You're right. still there, you're still here in Japan. Mm -hmm. So, and, like, since and now I'm you're still English teacher. trying to wipe the lipstick <laughs> off my shirt. Ah, <laughs> 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 Okay, I think it's gone now. I can sleep at peace tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, that's good, that is good. Yep. Hmm. So now you're still living in Japan, and you've probably gone through the whole Corona pandemic in Japan. So yes. how would how did you find that experience? That was how was that for you? Was that hard, or was it? 
like the whole corona situation well mm. i was unemployed for six months so it was kind of difficult back then mm. but um i would say thanks to corona it pushed me to challenge myself more because back like back when, mm. I, was, when I was still working at hospitality like i was still working at a hotel and um I wanted to do English teaching, but I did not have enough confidence in myself. Mm. And uh, and I got complacent with my hospitality jobs. Um, but Corona happened and then like basically your hospitality is dead. Yep. <laughs> so uh, yep, it was, I was kind of like still appalling. Yeah, it was kind of like <laughs> appalling for me. And then I thought like, okay, so hospitality is not working at the moment. So let's try to go back to my initial plan. I wanted to be an English teacher. Mm. And yeah, I got the job. And <laughs> after six months of unemployment, mm. I found a company. And then that was like my stepping stone into the English teaching, mm. um, the, this whole English teaching world in Japan. And yes, now here I am. <laughs> nice. So now so I'm doing the gym and, and you have time bad. to do drag um, as well, even. It, it, it was bad. Um, mm. because because I lost my restaurant yeah. job and I was unemployed. It was really stressful. And I was thinking like, shit, should I go back to Vietnam? Mm. I'm from Vietnam, by the way. And um, should I stay here? Like, what do I do? Like, like it was really stressful. Mm. But it like you just have to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And yeah, it was and for you. It's come out fabulous, right? To <laughs> yeah, to change my job and to really go out there and do something that I could have done a long mm. time ago. So yeah, I'm happy. And eventually I got corona. And so <laughs> um I got corona and I got two shots of vaccine. So basically I am invincible now. With corona <laughs> nice. and vaccine. I don't really care anymore. I'm just it's just really dreadful by this point. Mm. So maybe is it also thanks to Corona you'll be able to do more drag stuff? Oh like, no, do honey, more of your hobbies or has that gone of down? Corona, um drag is literally struggling at this moment oh. <laughs> um because we could not gather yeah like during uh, yeah. the first wave like back in 2020 mm. like all drag shows and all events were completely cancelled or um uh postponed but mm. we did not even know what was going on okay but then yeah and then we had to do live stream shows and uh, we had to do like digital drag shows that we didn't get a lot of benefits and we didn't get a lot of revenue or mm. yeah so all free pretty much right yeah it, it was really hard because no one wants to pay to watch a fucking live stream like you're at your yeah house. yeah like <laughs> you're on your own computer you don't want to pay money yeah. to watch something that why there is like plenty of stuff out there for free. It's like hard to compete against Netflix, right? So, exactly. So <laughs> everything we did was for free. Like all of these um, live stream shows and all of these digital drag shows, they were completely voluntary and we didn't get any money for it. So uh, yeah, I mean, it was fun. It was kind of like experimenting a new mm. segment of, of drag because we had to think of how to make a video, like how to edit and how to mm. turn our concept into like this performance art on screen instead of in person. Mm. So it was a lot of different aspect to it. Did you learn anything um, new through that? I had fun doing it, but I wouldn't do it for the rest of my life. Like I would still prefer a live audience with a live show. It's a yeah, lot yeah, people, right? You get to see the expressions, <laughs> you get to see the reactions. Like on the, when it's on the screen, yeah. it's like, we it's even like scream. <laughs> <laughs> the screams and the money, right? They throw the money at no. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> and I don't have my makeup on, that's why I have these ridiculous sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> but it just shows you still got the drag going on. It's shows you in the spirit, right? Like of course, drag is shows the spirit. The drag yeah, spirit. Yeah, it shows the spirit. Yeah. So, and now um corona has eased a little bit i mean mm. we have omicron i know that omicron is raging mm. but I, it seems like people don't really care anymore because they're so dreaded yeah everyone's it. vaccine now yeah i hey now drag shows um tend to be day show oh, and, um, yeah they 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 perform really early and they finish before eight o'clock before nine o'clock 
Yeah, because the curfew now is at eight o'clock for like most. Yeah, because of the state of emergency, like we cannot sell alcohol or we cannot sell food after eight o'clock and like all of this stupid shit. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't really make any difference. But <laughs> still, the government is imposing it, so yeah, you know, drag shows have to accommodate, and we turn into um, day shows. And oh my gosh, doing day drag is the worst thing. <laughs> Oh, why is like, it so thank bad? God, I don't really do day shows. Like, I don't perform for any day shows because I work on Saturday and Sunday, and most drag shows happen on Saturday and Sunday, so I cannot do it, and I don't really want to do it either. Um, I have my own shows. I have like my own production with mm. other members. Like, we have a house here in Tokyo. It's really complicated, like this whole house concept, and um, basically, we just we are all. Um, how can I say, like, general workers by day because we all mm. have our, our regular jobs. Ah, work by um, night and drag by day. It's a work by yeah, day, drag by night. We love doing <laughs> drag and then we just get together once in a while, like once in mm. a month or once in every two months. Um, and, and then we, we put a show together. Like, we take care of the venue renting, we take care of like uh, promotion and then all of the cast. Mm. And then like we create our own concepts, like everything. So, nice. Yeah, it's, it's really fun. We just do it as a side gig. It's our mm. hobby and we do it once every two or three months. So I think it's rewarding. So you yeah, it's not worrying about making money from it, right? Exactly. It's, it's not more like about making money. Enjoyment. It's more about like, enjoying the community, enjoying the spirit of it and uh, spreading the love and spreading the um, nice. positivity of art to people nice. during this really difficult time. Yeah. So we're going to end the first part of this interview of two here. And next part, you're going to talk to me a bit about LGBT life in Japan. Yes. What please. is that like? Some ups and downs? Um, and maybe where's it going? So, so we're going to end there. And for the next part, yes, um, stick around. Yes.